"'Twas the night before Christmas, and down by the docks, Ceci and Pennies argued and thought, "'Is it you or I with a better MC? "'Because I can fix that with a PID.' "'No, no, no!' Pennies yelled and screamed, "'for he could not believe the magic he'd seen. "'I've had it, I've had it. Enough is enough. "'I'm no longer running. I'm calling your bluff.' Fair enough, says he says, as he lets out a sigh and spawns in a platform forty blocks wide. You want war? Let's fight. Just you and me. Fire your weapons on the count of three. From the ashes, a creature appears. Out walks Ceci, trembling with fear. Who are you? You didn't destroy anything, let alone hit it. You need to calculate your shots. Trigonometry. No. I said no. No, you won't. Yes, you will. Fine. Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to discover and learn some of the marvelous things you can do with basic trigonometry. If you have no previous knowledge of trigonometry, I recommend you watch the video in the description, as it gives a basic understanding of the free trigonomic functions we will be using. If you don't care about understanding, you can still do the tutorial and maybe even pick up some trigonometry. This tutorial contains four parts, and in those we will make two different creations. One that will convert a radar signature into a GPS coordinate the same global coordinates that are on the map. With this, we can make some really cool stuff, like a GPS turret, which will be the second creation that we will be making today. To start off, we're going to be making a radar to GPS tracker, which will give us the ability to do many things like turrets, autopilots, missiles, and much more. Start by adding a radar Set the sweep mode to static and FOV to max on both X and Y. Don't forget to connect the on-off to the radar. Connect the radar composite to a microcontroller. Give the microcontroller two composite nodes. One input and one output. Connect the input composite to a Lua block and the Lua block output to the composite output. Before the coding starts, we need to understand the theory. Here we have a top-down view of the radar and a target. If we draw a line between them and label them, A being the target and C the radar, the distance between A and C is the distance to the target. The radar composite gives this distance on channel 1, so we can use this in our calculations. You might be wondering why the line between A and C says hypotenuse. That is because if we draw a triangle, we get a right angle triangle. And if we draw the angle between the hypotenuse and adjacent, we get the angle given by the radar composite on channel 2. We now have a distance and an angle. If you know trigonometry, you know that we can calculate the other sides of the triangle with this information. Because the opposite divided by the hypotenuse gives the sine angle between the hypotenuse and adjacent. If we reformulate the function, we get that hypotenuse times the sine angle gives the length of the opposite side. We get the adjacent side by doing the same thing, reformulating the cosine function to get the adjacent side. So, 
We now have two functions which gives the opposite and adjacent sides, so we can label the hypotenuse as the distance, adjacent as the x-coordinate, and the opposite as the y-coordinate. There is a catch however. We need to switch the x and y, because from the radar's perspective, x goes left and right, and y forwards and backwards, as it does in a right-handed coordinate system which we will be using. We will compensate for this in the code, which we will now take a look at. First, we need to save the information given by the radar. We save the distance in a variable by calling the input.getNumber function with the channel set to 1. We do the same with the jaw, which is the left-right angle, as well as the pitch on their respective channels 2 and 3, we have now saved the information from the radar. The next step is figuring out the coordinates of the target. As I explained before, we can do this by multiplying the distance to the target by sine and cosine. But first, we need to convert the yaw angle from turns, which is given by the radar, to radians, that the trigonomic functions use. First, we need to convert the yaw angle from turns to degrees. We can simply do this by multiplying it by pi 2, but for those who would like to understand every step, I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. When I say that the jaw angle is in turns, I mean that a one value from the radar means a full 360 degree turn. Multiplying it by 360 thereby makes the angle into degrees. The trigonomic functions takes angles in radians, so we need to convert from degrees to radians by using the math.rad function, which does just that. So, now that we have the radar angle in the format we need, we can do our calculations. Now, we calculate the x and y with the functions we theorized, and remember, the reason the x is multiplied by the sine function and y with the cosine and not the other way around, is because the x and y is switched from the radar's perspective. So, x equals the distance multiplied by the sine of the radar jaw angle, and y equals the distance multiplied by the cosine of the radar jaw angle. And if you're wondering, math.sine is the sine angle, and math.cos the cosine angle. Now that we have compensated for our global rotation, we also need to compensate for the global tilt rotation, which means how much we have rotated forwards and backwards. We do this in the same way as the x and y, except we use the pitch angle instead of the jaw angle. Now, you might see that we are using tangent instead of sine, which you might think we should be using, but because of the radar's perspective, it's calculated with tangent, just like we switched the x and y. So, Z equals the distance multiplied by the tangent of the pitch angle. Lastly, we need to output these calculated coordinates. We do this with the output.setNumber function. So finally set x, y, and z to their respective channels 1, 2, and 3. If we now take a look at the corrected triangle output coordinate, we can see that the x equals to 6, meaning that the target is 6 meters to the right, and y equals 22, meaning it's 22 meters forwards. The z equals 0 because it's at the same altitude. Alright, for the next step, we need to account for our global position. For that, we need to know the radar's global position. We can get that information by adding a GPS coordinate reader which gives us the X and Y coordinates, and is set with an altitude reader. Add three new number connections to the microcontroller and name them accordingly. Then, in the logic, add a composite right number with the start channel set to 4 because the radar uses channels 1 to 3. Connect the radar to the composite right, as well as the new X, Y, and Z inputs. Finally, connect the composite right to the Lua block. Time for some theory. Note, 
I've added a GPS turret that we will make later. It's just there to show where the radar microcontroller sees the target. We are currently only calculating local coordinates, which is sometimes all you want, but for most scenarios you want global coordinates, as in GPS coordinates. To make the local coordinates global, we simply need to add the global coordinates to our local. So, if the radar is at the global coordinate x equals negative 4 and y equals negative 2, we get that the global coordinate of the target is 11 on the x and 5 on the y. So all we need to do in the code is add the global coordinates from the new position reader blocks to the local coordinates. Now we have global coordinates, however, you might have noticed that it's a little off or completely off, and that is because we're not accounting for the radar's global rotation. So if it's not facing north or not flat on the ground, then it will be off in the coordinates. To account for this, we need two new blocks. A compass facing forwards and a tilt sensor facing forwards with the arrow standing up. The flat faces to the sides, that is. Make sure to place the compass and tilt sensor on the same body as the radar so they're always facing in the direction of the radar. Now add the compass and tilt sensor to the composite right in the microcontroller. Fairy time again. In this case scenario, the radar would not give the correct coordinates without accounting for the global rotation. If we draw a triangle to the target as well as the angle of the compass which is currently 90 degrees from north, we can see that if we do the exact same thing as we did with the global coordinates, we get the correct angle. See, if we simply add the compass angle to the radar angle, so 20 degrees plus negative 90 degrees, which equals negative 70 degrees. We also have to account for the global pitch rotation. So we do the same thing as we did for the compass angle. We add the global tilt angle to the local radar pitch angle, so 20 plus 30 degrees equals 50 degrees. Now we have the global rotation on both axes. So to apply this in code, we first need to save the global compass and tilt values. So we do as before, use the input.getNumber function on the corresponding channels to get the values and save them in variables. Next up, we need to add the global angles to the local. We do this by simply adding the global compass angle to the local draw angle and multiply it by negative 360 to convert it from turns to degrees. Negative because of the radar rotation. Now do the same thing with the pitch angle. Add the global tilt multiplied by 360. Now, if some axes are reversed, simply make it negative. Reverse it by subtracting it. And there you go. You are now accounting for almost every variable. There is however one last problem that might not be so apparent. If we roll the radar to its side, it will no longer work. This is because there is a third axis, roll. This axis is harder to account for, but there is a simple fix. Let's do it. To fix the roll issue, we just need to keep the radar from rolling. We kill two birds with one stone with this step. We fix the roll issue and make an easy targeting system that we control by just looking at the target. For this step, we need to add two velocity pivots, with the gear ratio set to 1-4 and the rest to default. We also need to place all the positional information blocks on the pivots as centered as possible. To control the radar, we have two function blocks, with the function being x multiplied by 4. Connect the seat look x and y to the function blocks, and from the function blocks to the pivots. The look x function block to the bottom pivot, and the look y function block to the other. The radar will now look in the direction we are looking. If the controls are reversed in one or both axes, when in the seat, just reverse the corresponding pivot, or set a negative before the multiplied by 4. So, negative x multiplied by 4. Now if we look at the target, the radar will give the correct coordinates. Next up is making a GPS turret, which you can see in the image.
To start off, we need a microcontroller with lots of inputs. We need to know the position of the GPS turret, so we make the input nodes for the self GPS turret X, Y, and C, as well as the compass and tilt. We also need to be able to control the turret, so a pitch and draw control node is also needed. Next up is the turret build. We need two velocity pivots, set to 1 to 32 gear ratio, with the jaw pivot being the base, and the pitch pivot being attached to the jaw pivot. Now we need to put the instruments on the turret. You can place them however you want, but there are optimal placement positions. The laser distance sensor is not necessary, but good for seeing what it aims at. The compass should be placed facing forwards, the altimeter at the same altitude as the tool being used, which is in this case the laser distance sensor. The tilt sensor should be placed facing forwards with the arrow standing up. A GPS sensor placed under the jaw pivot. Very time! So, if we draw a right angle triangle to the target, we can label the Y being the depth and X being the left right corner. In this example, Y equals 15 and X equals 5. If we take the inverse tangent of the opposite divided by the adjacent side, we get the angle to the target. So, the inverse tangent of x divided by y. If we calculate this, we get an angle of about 18 degrees. So now we know how to get the angle to the target. If we simply command the pivot to turn by the angle that we calculate, it will aim towards the target. Let's code this. First, we need to save the instrument information in variables. To do that, we use the input.getNumber function on their corresponding channels. After that, we need to get the relative coordinates to the target. We do this the same way as we converted the local coordinates to global, but in reverse. So instead of adding, we now subtract the global coordinates with the turret coordinates. After that, we need to convert the turret pitch and jaw from turns to degrees by multiplying them by 360. The self jaw needs to be offset by 90 degrees so we simply add 90 degrees to it. Now we need to calculate the relative distance to the target. We do this by getting the hypotenuse. We simply use the Pythagorean theorem. So the relative distance is x to the power of 2 plus y to the power of 2, and all of that squared by taking it to the power of 0.5. We now have all of the variables to calculate the angles. We calculate the jaw angle by taking the inverse tangent, which is math.atan, of the relative y and relative x. The math function gives the answer in radians, so we do math.deg to convert to degrees. We do the same to the pitch, except we use the relative distance as the adjacent side, the second argument. Now we have to account for our global rotation as before, but in a slightly different way. But the theory is the same. The target pitch angle subtracted by the turret pitch, self pitch. Then we take the relative pitch by the modulo of 360. This simply keeps the relative pitch within 360 degrees. Then we do the same with the jaw. Now we need to convert the 360 degree angles to positive negative 180 degrees. We do this with an if statement that subtracts the angle by 360 degrees when it's more than 180 degrees. Lastly, we need to output the pitch and draw angles so we can use them to control the turret. The composite read number reads the pitch and draw angles and go into the process variable of the PIDs, which smooths the turret movement as well as allowing for custom sensitivity by changing the proportional value which is set to 0.05 for this turn. The composite read on off simply turns on the laser when the radar has an on signal if you make the radar to GPS microcontroller output an on value when the radar has a target. And that's it! You can now convert radar signatures to GPS, as well as use those coordinates to aim at. You can also make an autopilot for boats, cars and planes. You simply hook up the jaw to whatever turns the craft left and right, and the pitch to up-down controls. Before we say goodbye, 
I want to give a huge thanks to 8 Pennies Deep and Mailman for helping in the making of this video. It would not be possible to make without these two amazing people. Please go check 8 Pennies Deep channel out for some awesome videos and creations. And if you like the graphics in this video, I strongly recommend you go check Mailman's channel out. He has started out his channel and already has some pretty awesome content. Again, a million thanks to my friends who helped out in the making of this video and thank you all who are still watching. I know it's a little late because this video took a lot longer than anticipated, but here we are. Have a merry, merry, merry Christmas everyone. I hope you all had a great New Year's and I hope this year will be good for all of us. Bye!